Привет, доверянцы! And... Welcome to Russia! In this video, we will show you how to play the Red Cathedral, a game by Isra and Shea, also known as the Yamadais, with art by Pedro Soto and Chema Ramon. Uh, this is a game for one to four players that lasts around an hour and a half or so, okay? In the Red Cathedral, you will take the role of a, a master builder who has been contracted to collaborate in the construction of St. Basil's Cathedral. All that to commemorate the military victories by the Tsar uh, Ivan the Terrible. So, by taking the best resources in the market, using the favors of the guilds, and claiming, building, and uh, decorating uh, different sections of the cathedral, you will try to have more prestige than your opponents and win the favor of the Tsar. Let's check what's inside the box and then we will explain you how to play the game and at the end the solitary move. So you will see uh, how inside the box is everything practically vacuum sealed. Uh, there is no empty space on the, in this box. You will find, as always, the rules in different languages with everything well explained and a lot of examples to make it easier. Okay, you have also the main board, okay, with the market as a rondel here in the center, space for the four guilds, and the score track in the outside. You will see how there are two tracks here, okay, all those tiny numbers for the recognition points and the ones in the eagles for the, for the prestige points. So every time the game says that you have to win or lose recognition points, just uh, move it forward or backwards. But if you have to win or lose prestige points, just you have to move it to the next or the previous closest uh, eagle. Okay, but you will see. Then we have five colored dyes, okay, those were with the workers that are in the market. And uh, we have also the, um, the tiles for the resources in the market. If we talk about tiles, we have also the workshop tiles that start here in the cathedral section. And then when the game advances, it will be part of our workshops. We have also uh, a few cards. First of all, we have the plan section uh, cards, okay, that uh, shows the, um, the shape of the cathedral that you have to build, okay. Depending on the number of players, you have one or other for, you can see up here, with the, those guys here, for four players, three or two, like we're going to simulate, okay. Then with the shape of that uh, cathedral, you will perform your cathedral. You have cards for the cathedral sections divided into doors, bases, um, middle sections, and domes, okay? And you have also cards for the different guilds, okay? Separated by the guilds. And finally, you have cards for the solitary mode. We're going to, we're going to explain those cards at the end of the video. You have also the different resources, rubbles, gold, lumber, bricks, rocks, stone, and gems of two different colors. And then you have four equal sets uh, in different colors, uh, green, yellow, blue, and red, okay? And composed by the, the workshop, okay? With two uh, different sides, the one with the regular side, with, for the regular game, and one considered advanced, okay? Where you have uh, some elements that are uh, locked and you have to unlock them. And you have six banners and the elements for decoration, okay? Two arches, one door, and one cross. And finally, the, the, the score token, okay? With two sides, the regular one, and one with the, a plus 40. If you have completed the, the entire track, just turn around and start again. And those are the elements that are included in the game. Let's uh, see how to make everything ready to start playing, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so for the setup, first of all, you have to place the board at the center of the playing zone and then take the, the, the guild cards, shuffle them separately for each uh, guild and take one of uh, each one and place them in the four corners, okay? Now take all the resources on the market, shuffle them and place them on the rondelle. And now take all the dice, shuffle them in your hand and let one fall, okay? Then place that one here where the cross is. And following the arrows, do the same with the remaining dice. Uh, that's just a way to randomize that. So if you want to put all the dice in a, in a bag and take one and continue that way or put them all in the box, shuffle and take it uh, without looking at them, feel free, do whatever you want. The only thing is that you have to start with the one in the cross and randomize that, okay? So, so with that, we have uh, the main board already, already set. Now it's time to see how the cathedral will look, okay? So take um, the, the plant cards, shuffle them according to the number of players, okay? Of course, we are simulating a two players game. We took all the cards for two players, but if you're more, then uh, take the ones for three or four, that's up to you, depending on the number of players. Shuffle them and take one. That's the shape that the cathedral will have. So now it's time to uh, make the, 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 the skeleton of the cathedral, okay? So starting by the bases, shuffle all of them and starting from left to right, place all the bases and continue that way with all the middle sections, shuffled, shuffling the middle section cards first and placing them here and finally with the domes, okay? Uh, always place those cards showing uh, the coast uh, to build them, okay? Not the most, sorry, the most beautiful part here that will be at the end once you have completed that section, okay? Now take all the workshop tiles, uh, discarding uh, those for more players than you are playing, okay? You will see that they are some of them that is for more, three players or more, but if not, uh, just, uh, well, just take the ones that uh, that you need uh, according to the number of players, shuffle them and place them here at random, okay? Now the main base of the cathedral is completed and just save at one side all the resources as a common reserve. And now it's time for players to take their own materials, okay? The workshop. Now we're going to explain you the the, the, the side uh, for the regular game, not the advanced one, but uh, in the specifications during the how to play it, we will show you the other side, don't worry. Okay, now take all the decoration materials and place them on the matching spaces. Same thing with the banners. Okay, place those four in your inventory to outside it. And finally, the score track in the second position uh, of the track. Okay, you will see it's uh, it has a different color, so it's easy to identify. Obviously with the plus 40 looking down. And finally, the first player will receive three rubbles and the second and third four rubbles and the fourth player five rubbles. And with that, everything will be ready to start playing the rest of it. So Red Cathedral is played over uh, a variable number of turns, okay? Will player, players will alternate uh, their turns and the game will end when uh, a player has completed their, sex, their sixth um, section of the cathedral. That player will win three points and the remaining players will have one uh, extra final turn. During your turn, you uh, you can choose between three different actions that you can perform. And also, you can take extra actions that are shown here, okay? During your turn, you can always exchange prestige points, 
Okay, you can lose one prestige points to get two rubbles. You can do it as many times as you want during your turn. You can also uh, reduce your prestige points by one and re-roll the dice on a single section. Okay, but you can do it just once during your turn. But those are extra actions. The main actions are the following, and you will find them here. Actually, the the workshop is very useful to to remind you how the game works. Okay, uh, so you will you can claim a cathedral section. You can send materials to the section that you have claimed, or not. We'll see. And you can use the um, the market. So let's take a look to those three actions. The first one is to claim a section. You can take one of your banners and claim an available um, section of the cathedral. A section will be available if it has no banner on it and is a base or the one uh, below it uh, has already been claimed. For, for example, that one, that one will be available or the remaining bases, okay? So, once you have claimed a base, take the workshop tile, and now you can place it or face down in your workshop, and nothing happens, or you can pay the cost and place it face up in the place that you prefer, okay? Then you will take uh, receive immediately that reward, in this case, that's the reward associated to the white die, so two bricks. And from now on, every time that you uh, use the, the green die, you will receive that reward. In the, in the other side, in the advanced side, uh, it works a little bit different, okay? You always have to pay three rubbles to place them here. And also, uh, it will unlock those elements, as you can see, the doors, arches, and crosses, they don't start here. And same thing with the, those two banners. Okay, so if you want to use those banners or um, the decorations, you have to unlock them first. So that was the first one, just claim a cathedral section. Second one, um, send resources to the cathedral. You can uh, send the materials to build uh, one of your claim sections or to decorate one that has already been completed. If you send the materials, you can up, uh, send up to three materials to the, um, to the cathedral sections, okay, that you have uh, claimed. Obviously, the materials that you're sending has to match with those needed. Let's imagine that we have in our inventory two boots, one, and let's say stone. So by taking that action, we can send up to three materials to uh, a section claimed by us. So we have just one here. We can send three materials, two boots and one stone, for example, here. You don't have to send the materials to a single uh, section that you own. Let's imagine that we also have that one. We can send one boot here, one stone here, and the other lumber here. Uh, you don't have to complete the section in a single uh, trip. Okay, you can save it for later, okay? But that's just if you're going to construct your, uh, your sections. The only way that you can send materials to the cathedral is to uh, decorate. And to decorate, you can decorate completed sections. And it doesn't matter if they are yours or not. Okay, I'm getting everything ready just to show how that works. Good. In this case, you have to decorate with a door, the arch, or the cross, depending if you are decorating the base, you need a door, the domes are decorated with crosses, and the middle sections are decorated with arches. You have to send the material that corresponds, that matches with the uh, element that you want to place. So, lumber for doors, stone for arches, and gold for crosses. Let's see, we have the gold. And you can also ornamentate those decorations, okay, with, um, with gems. In this case, you have just one shot to decorate a section. 
So let's say that we want to decorate that one. It doesn't matter if it's yours or it belongs to your opponent. Let's say that we want to place the cross here. We will send a gold. That's what needs them. So we'll send a gold. And you can send one or two gems if you, to make it more beautiful, to ornament it. If you send one gem, you will win one prestige point per gem that you have sent there. And if the gems are different, you will win uh, three prestige points, as shown down here. But that's the maximum that you can send, because you can send just three materials. You will send one for the decoration and maximum two gems to ornament it. And when you are constructing the, the section, when you complete a section, let's say, for example, that we are sending here two bricks and one purple. Now the section is complete, just turn on up, well, you will win the reward, in, the, in this case, seven recognition points, but usually it's recognition points and sometimes rubbles, okay? A4, back two, etc. So just turn around the piece, just leave the banner to remind you that you are the owner. It's important for the end of the game to check for the final score. Mm -hmm. And now the players that have some claim sections but not completed below that one will lose prestige points, a uh, recognition points, sorry. So they will lose uh, one, pre one recognition point mm -hmm for every completed section that uh, belongs to their rivals um, that are above the, their section. So in this case, the blue player will lose one recognition point because that one is already complete, but yellow won't lose any because it does, okay? It's our uh, completed section. If, if, let's imagine that the blue player was down here and that one was also completed, Blue player, in this case, will lose two recognition points. And now let's check for the third action, which is the, the main engine of the game, okay? The, the market rondelle. With the third available action, you can go to uh, take the materials from the market, okay? You have to choose one of the available dice and move it as many spaces as the value shown on the die. Let's say that we choose the green one. Okay, we have to move it one step forward. And now we receive the reward multiplied by the number of dies that are in that section. So in this case, we'll receive two purple um, gems. If let's say that, whoop, that one was a two, one, two, it's two bricks per two dice. We will receive four of that element. Uh, you have to know that the, um, your inventory has a limited uh, capacity. So if you are going to take more materials than the one that you can place in your uh, inventory, you cannot discard uh, materials from your inventory. So you have to decide which elements you will keep and which one will be lost. So by using the die, you will have, uh, you will trigger the different actions. One is the one that I already explained, is to receive the reward of the market. The second one is to use the favor of the, of the guilds, okay? Every quarter of the board uh, belongs to uh, a guild, so you can use also their uh, ability, their favor, okay? And obtain that reward. And finally, you can you can use the uh, the workshop tiles okay we have used the green uh, die so it triggers that one so we will receive also the white uh, die uh, reward so in this case we'll receive the double that reward one for the green one and again for the white die once you have that done that just re-roll the die and place them here. Uh, there are a couple of important things that you have to know here. If the die that you're using is the one of your color or the white one, you can always pay one um, rubble to move it one space forward. And you can do it as, uh, as many uh, spaces as you want. So 
if that was a two, but we are not interested in Brick, we want the goal, we can pay one rubble, and the two is one, two, and with the rubble, it will be a three. Then we'll take the gold, multiply it by a two dice, and we will reroll them. And also, uh, those dice cannot um, cannot finish their movement in a non in a non um, available space. Okay, if the place is full of dice, you cannot move here. Okay, that's a two. You cannot use that die to because it has no space here. What you can do is to pay a rubble, and instead of two, it will be a three, and then you can go here, but not here. Okay, if not, that one isn't available. Uh, and the third important thing is that the actions that you can perform in the market, where we're uh, receiving the, the material, using the favor of the guilds, and using the workshop tiles, will ha will be triggered in the order that you prefer. Okay, you can receive first the reward of the die and then use the, the favor of the guild because maybe you will empty your uh, inventory and then take the resource etc just that will be up to you and and that thing we will continue that way okay alternating turns choosing between claiming a section sending materials to uh, build or decorate and uh, using uh, the market okay to obtain resources uh, the favor of the guilds and maybe triggering the workshop tiles until a player uh, completes their sixth section that will be the end of the game. Remember that player will receive three extra points and the remaining ones will have one extra turn. And once that happens, it's time to check for the final score. So as we were saying, once a player has completed their sixth uh, section of the cathedral, in this case the yellow one, uh, is uh, it triggers the end of the game. The, the yellow one will receive three uh, extra prestige points, and uh, the blue has played uh, a final turn. And now it's check the f it's time to check the final scoring. First of all, players has to move back to the previous. Uh, prestige point marker, so that one will here. The blue one is already in one, so it stays here. If, uh, as, as we said before, if a player has completed the, the entire track, okay, turn around the eagle and just show the plus 40, but, but that's not the case, so don't worry. And now, uh, to those uh, points that the players uh, has won during the game, you have to add uh, one prestige point for every five uh, resources and rubbles, okay? So we have five here, five here, that's two extra points. I will win uh, the blue one, one. And now it's time to check uh, the points uh, by uh, given by the cathedral. The cathedral will give points for each tower, okay? Each tower is uh, scored uh, separately from the others. And they will give uh, the, 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 the value of the tower is two points for every completed section plus one per decoration. So in this case, it will be two, four, six, seven, and eight. Those are the points uh, of that section. And the, the, the player that has contributed the most to that tower will earn those points. And the second one will receive half of that value rounding down and so on. So let's check the example. In this case, we say it, eight points. The blue one has uh, collaborated with one banner and one decoration, but the yellow has two banners and one decoration. So that's three versus two. The yellow player will receive eight points and the blue four. So we'll move that. And we have to check that for each tower. In case of tie, like we have here, for example, it's two and one decoration and one banner and versus one banner and one decoration is, is a tie, two, two. You have to add the reward for um, both players, let's say for the first position and the second position, in this case, two, four, is six, six, and the next uh, reward will be three, half of that. And you have to add those uh, rewards, six plus three is nine, and divide it by two. 
four, because it's four and a half, always rounding down four for each player. And you will check that for all the towers. And at the end of the game, the player who has advanced most in the track of uh, prestige points will be the winner of the game. The other one, likely for you, uh, the game won't follow the, the legend that says that the Tsar blind, uh, blindfold the, the main architect so he will not uh, design anything more beautiful than that cathedral. So you will pay uh, for the defeat just with humiliation and not with your sight. So in the solitary mode, you will compete against Ivan Jakovlevic, the architect chosen by the Tsar to design the cathedral, who's now in charge of a, of a team to build a part of the cathedral. So that's going to be your rival uh, for the favor of the Tsar. For the setup, uh, it's exactly the same as for a two-player game, but uh, Ivan won't need uh, its workshop, uh, his workshop, okay? He will just choose a color for him, of course, but he will play with the, the, the cards that belong to him, okay? So just shuffle those cards and place them in a single line from left to right, and then take the the workshop tiles uh, that correspond to a, to a three or more player game with the uh, colored dice. Shuffle them and place them here. Save at the end of the line all the decorations of Ivan's and take all the banners, placing up here in that card, above that card. Okay, that's the card uh, that, that says that Ivan will claim a uh, cathedral section and place one immediately in one of the bases, uh, the one that grants most uh, 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 recognition points uh, to Ivan. In case of tie, because we can see here we have uh, three with an eight, he will choose the rightmost one, so that one. And immediately takes the recognition point, so he will always start with more points than you. And now, Everything is ready to start with the game. You will play as normal, okay? You, you return as normal, and then, so, just you will choose as in the regular game between those three actions, and you will do that, and then it will be Ivan's turn. And to check what action Ivan will perform, you have to check at the at the line uh, that shows the actions. You have to see those with the tile uh, faced up, okay? Now uh, all of them are available, but once you have complete uh, one of the actions, uh, those will be turned around. So that will show you which is the action that Ivan will perform now, okay? The actions are the follow. Ivan, in that one, Ivan will win four recognition points. In that one, Ivan will uh, take Four resources from the common reserve. Uh, from the yeah, from the common reserve. Uh, it doesn't matter which kind of uh, of resource. Okay, just take four and place them here. Because you will see now in that one, Ivan will move the resources from here up to this card. Okay, so move it here. The next one is to claim a cathedral section. In this case, Ivan will claim a section that is immediately above one that you have claimed, okay? If not, he will... Um, if, 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 well, if you haven't claimed anyone yet, yes, he will claim one uh, of the ones that uh, are available and that will be up to you which one to choose. But let's say that if you have claimed that one, Ivan will claim that one. And Ivan won't use those uh, workshop tiles, but he will re immediately receive the recognition points associated to the car, okay? So once he claimed, he received five points. And finally, the final action is to move four resources to uh, the cathedral sections that he has claimed. It doesn't matter um, if the resources doesn't match with uh, 
with the resources that the car demands. Uh, the only thing that Ivan must respect is the number of, uh, of materials. So you have to send four, starting from uh, left to right and the bottom to the top, Ivan will deliver the, the material. So starting here, one, two, three, four, he will send here four, he will complete that section, okay, so he will receive again those eight points. But let's imagine that uh, that one, oh, okay, it's already like that. So you will send one, for example, four more. You will send one here and the remaining ones here. Okay, continue always in that sense. And that's it, actually. As we said, once you have done that, just clip the tile. And if none of those tiles are available, it's time to decorate, okay? Ivan will, instead of using those, because they are already been used, he will decorate following the order, door, arch, arch, and cross. And he will decorate a section that you have completed, okay? Let's imagine that that one was completed by you, okay? Ivan will put a door here. And, in, and immediately get one prestige point. If uh, there are no um, completed sections by you, or he cannot decorate it because you already have decorated that one, he will decorate one that uh, belongs to him. And if uh, he cannot decorate any one because there are not uh, sections available to decorate, he will skip that, uh, that part. Once you have done that, just take again the workshop tiles, shuffle them, and place them in their space again at random. And that's it. You will continue that way, alternating the turns, until Ivan or you have completed the sixth section of the cathedral. In this case, that player, you or uh, Ivan, won't receive those three uh, prestige points, but mm, the, the other player will have one final turn. And that's it, at the end of the game, you will uh, check the score like in the regular game. And if you have more points than Ivan, you will be the winner of the solitaire mode of Red Cathedral. And that's it, that's the Red Cathedral. Uh, building game with a majorities mechanic in the, um, in the score with a dice worker placement for the resources and everything in that small box. So it's impossible to ask more for less. We hope you have enjoyed the game and remember to keep playing. Bye.